After a successful first trip to the continental shelf, it didn't take long before I was keen to head straight back out and chase some bigger fish. On our previous trip, we landed a couple nice dog tooth tuna, and although we saw wahoo on the last trip, we didn't get the chance to quite spear one because either we missed or they just didn't quite come close enough. On this trip, the target was for the boys to shoot a wahoo. Second to the dog tooth tuna, wahoo is a highly prized pelagic fish. Little knowledge on how to spear them and where to find them put us up to the test, and although I'd probably say we were pretty lucky to find as many as we did, maybe we did something right and it could be applied for future trips. We started off our drifts in some similar ground to where we were the previous week. We had quite a lot of luck seeing lots of bait and a few Spanish mackerel swimming past. We weren't really after a Spanish mackerel so we were sort of wanting to hold out before shooting one. Generally when you're out chasing blue water fish, you aren't really after a quantity of fish, but rather quality. And so it's important to note that when you're out here, you're not just going and shooting everything you sort of see, but you're waiting for the perfect moment for a fish of a lifetime. After starting our second drift of the day, we get a big surprise when a massive school of wahoo came in. We were completely unprepared, and needless to say, the boys all ended up missing or the gun had the safety on and unfortunately they all got away. To the left you might have seen Ivan just missed that big one and Cameron here was a bit out of range and also had his safety on. The safety! Oh my f***ing god! A few minutes later, when we get pushed up onto the shallower stuff, Ivan spots a jobfish that is easily over 10 kilos, and again he misses. We sort of realize that our aim isn't in, and the guns that we're using we've never actually used before. Luckily we borrowed them from a friend that was kind enough to, to let us use them, and uh, that's just my POV of Ivan missing. And so we sort of realize that our aim is completely off, and a couple of Spanish come in, so we try to take a few test shots, I guess. And um, yeah, just roll this footage on here and you'll probably see we just miss fish after fish. Luckily none of the fish we shot at were hit or harmed. And uh, it just goes to show that, you know, when you're using different guns, you definitely need to be a bit in tune with them. And if you haven't quite got it right, you're just gonna keep missing like this. And uh, we did actually have a bit of an issue with this gun in particular. It seemed to be shooting extremely low. And I was quite furious about this Spanish mackerel, as you can hear. Um, it was probably what I would have thought is between 15 and 20 kilo fish. So really a prized fish. And uh, yeah, you can just sort of see it just sort of dips straight down. And uh, on even on this shot again, you would have thought it looked like it was lined up quite well, but obviously not. And on this shot, Cameron actually did hit the fish, but someone's rigged the gun wrong and it's just torn out. And I personally obviously try to avoid this kind of thing happening. You don't want to just be hurting these fish. And um, we sort of took a moment to regroup and sort of figure out, all right, well, how can we make this work? We obviously aren't in tune with these guns, but um, we still need to land a couple fish. And so we just wanted to make sure we were taking safer shots. And on this one here, Matthias lines up perfectly on this rainbow runner. And uh, even though this fish is mainly going to just be used for chum, at least he landed the shot. And uh, just goes to show that that little bit extra bit of patience actually can just get you the fish. Once it got to around midday, we decided to head back into the flats and just chase a few reef fish. Very often those pelagic species seem to shut off and uh, there's not much point chasing them when not much is really happening. Uh-huh. 
After a few hours of fun chasing a few fish up in the reef flats, we decided to do more drifts and unfortunately the afternoon just didn't seem to be quite fishy. We had heaps of bait, heaps of trevallies, but all the Spanish seemed to pretty much disappear and no sign of wahoos. So at this point, we've pretty much decided to call it for the day and just head back into our anchorage and prepare for the next day. Sunset troll getting us a nice Spaniard. Sun's going down and uh, it's actually not a bad one. Wait, wait. Oh! Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that on fire right No, don't get out of the boat, bro. Just make sure you don't cut the line, please. That's actually a pretty decent one. I don't know. Oh, she's around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I missed, I missed the gaff. Oops. Oh. You missed the gaff? That's perfect yeah, in his eye. Yeah, I fell over. Oh yeah, nice Spaniard. Two seconds in the water, hey Cameron? Yeah. Yeah, Cameron's hooked up again. Giving Ivan the, the chance to uh, pull in his first pelagic fish on the troll look at this man go <laughs> he's gonna say I have opposite hand normally <laughs> <laughs> yeah fishes with the opposite hand normally <laughs> but um he's doing well probably Are gonna be another nice spaniard wow matthias your back looks so ripped right now bro <laughs> it red red. Look, look look at his back wait tense it, it again actually matthias. does on the camera. matthias tense it again oh <laughs> look at that oh, wow. <laughs> holy shit <laughs> Why is the camera you can't, oh, it's big! Is it a shark, man? Big Spanish! Big Spanish! Oh, that's a tuna! Bro, don't scare it off. Oh, it's foul hook! Oh, it's a shark. That's the closest uh, relative to a dog tuna, my friend. <laughs> close, close enough. <laughs> Maybe we'll tell him to get his coffee. Right. Whoa, bro. Whoa. That actually looks so good. Whoa. Are you going to get food? <laughs> I don't understand is why is the sounder so dead. <laughs> like there was supposed to be a bombing just over there. And... I could never. With little luck on the first day, I decided to head to some completely new ground and just try somewhere that we've never been before. Luckily, we just find this big school of bait which just seemed to be hugging the surface and uh, just out of nowhere, there's this pinnacle that comes up from around 70 meters up to 50. With little expectation on this new spot, I tell the boys to quickly jump in and have a look. And first thing, a big school of wahoo shoots in. Matthias barely just gets two out of the three bands on before he places this shot perfectly into this wahoo. Luckily, the shot held good enough that it didn't tear out and he pretty much hit it straight through the middle. And with wahoo, they're extremely fast fish. They just keep pulling and they've got really soft flesh as well, which often tears out and uh, a shot like this is quite a deal actually and it's pretty much if you're not aiming for the head you definitely want to hit it in the center of the body the key to landing this wahoo now that the shot's been placed is to just work it slowly and not put too much tension on the line these fish have extremely soft flesh and just too much tension could just rip the spear straight out matthias does this perfectly and he sort of just lets it run they will normally tire themselves out quite quickly. Once they've done that, that's when you slowly want to be pulling that line in. And uh, you just want to make sure that there's someone ready to put that backup shot in. Here you can see Ivan's right beside Matthias and he's ready to dive down and put this second shot in. 
At this stage, everyone's got their hearts pumping and this is pretty much the most crucial part, making sure that your dive body places that second shot perfectly. If he misses or puts a bad shot in, there's a good chance the fish might go for a second run and tear out. Second day, first trip. <laughs> Wahoo! We are so hey, stoked. Look, look at the shot. Turn look at it over. The oh, oh my God! God. That's That's the the shot. Shot. There we have it. The first <laughs> Wahoo landed in the boat by yes. Spears. Yes. By me and Ivan. Stoked. Woo! Look at that thing. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is huge. And there was eight of them apparently. <laughs> eight. Yes. Look at the chompers on him. That thing is nuts. Oh, it's like all right, tell us about this fish, Matthias. So, yeah, after I missed the first one, went down, literally as soon as I jumped, gun was unloaded, just came straight in, had to load in two seconds and just gave it a shot. Came right through on top and all the way down in the belly, I think. The belly ripped off, so it was just one flopper holding not there. And it was a crazy bite, he pulled so hard. <laughs> The moment we jump back in the water, the Wahoo school comes back in straight away. This is Cameron's POV of one coming just into him, a little bit out of range, and he tries to take a long shot and unfortunately misses. Right after, I have this one come straight in using my throw flasher and it just comes right up to me. And unfortunately, I placed a shot that is really unideal when you're hunting these kind of fish. It sort of just hit just below the belly and a uh, very common spot of a tear out. And uh, on this dive, so here's something that I really recommend you don't do. I tried to chase my throw flasher down because I didn't want to lose it. And uh, on the way down, a big bull shark charges straight up for me. And I was completely out of breath as well, something really irresponsible of me to do. And uh, just in the moment, I didn't really think about it, but definitely will not be doing that again. And so right after this Wahoo's been shot, I'm hoping that the shot will hold. And uh, as soon as I grab the line, it's pretty obvious that it's gone. And a bit of regret there, but clearly my fault for the shot placement. At this point, I was pretty devastated thinking that I'd just ruined my only chance at a Wahoo for the trip. We did a redrift, and luckily another school came in, and I managed to place a shot into this one. Probably the smallest one in the school, but I was still really stoked to actually land my first Wahoo. It shot off, and I had a pretty solid shot in the tail. So with Wahoo, from what I'd been told, um, the tail is another great spot to sort of shoot in because it's got those bones that don't really let you rip through. Um, if you shoot it anywhere in the middle of the like section of the body, um, there's a good chance that if it's below the gut, it'll just rip straight out. And so slowly working on this one, I tried not to pull too hard on it, but obviously I was pretty puffed and I was just really, really keen to land it. I get Matthias to jump in the water and put a second shot in for me, and um, well, he missed. And um, I couldn't believe it, I was actually just like, oh my god, what are you doing? And uh, anyways, Cameron pulled off second shot and fish was landed. <laughs> We've had a pretty hectic two days out here. First day was slow. We um, missed a bunch of these Wahoo and uh, I tore out of one big one unfortunately earlier, but I'm so stoked that I actually landed my first Wahoo, my first yellow lip, and the other boys got some awesome fish too. 
and uh, we're doing one last drift. We're hoping the Wahoos will come again. And if they don't, well, they'll be here for next time. But look at this guy. You. For anyone that's made it this far into the video, so this is just wild. a pretty funny clip of us doing what we were calling like the Wahoo mating call. And uh, it surprisingly worked really well. Every single drift, I just kept doing that and the, the schools would just cut, keep coming back in. And uh, yeah, it might have just been because the schools were there, but on that day it worked pretty bloody well. So here's just a funny bit of that. <laughs> That's the Wahoo mating call. <laughs>